Hey, dear Tyler, good morning. And how are you doing? I hope you're good. I hope you're fine. I hope everything is going on well. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed last the last episode with the Yibos. Right? Very hilarious couple. Oh, very fun. Um, loving individuals. And I really hope that we're learning lessons from um, these people. One of the targets for the month is to be able to draw out from the experiences of others, right? And it's, um, there's the scripture that says that follow those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Now, a lot of these guys are either living the realities that we want to have overcome the challenges that we're presently facing. And I felt that it would be extremely beneficial to bring people that have actually passed through these things i have my ideas i have my thoughts i have my perception yet there are certain things that i feel are ideal but they've lived in the real world and i it's it's only important for us to just you know hear from them if you understand right and so that's what i'm doing now today's episode is a little bit different because like i already stated on monday that it's not an interview per se but it's a it's a story of a dear friend of mine and one of the things i want to do in this month of february is to capture every possible love experience that I, I I could get right, so I just don't want to um, interview couples, you know, and just be like, okay, tell us about your love story. But I'm trying to get like as many different scenarios as possible. And yep, I'm still searching for. Um, so if you've got a love story that you'd love to share, why not? You could reach out to me. But then today's own is about someone that had gone through a lot. I don't want to spoil the story, but she had gone through a lot. And the, the 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 typically it's a story that should give a sense of like is there any happy ending at all? Um, but she's a proof that you know God really gives beauty for ashes. That irrespective of whatever happens, right? That there's still a beautiful end. You get to whatever challenge or situation you may be facing. And it's a full love story, trust me, it is. And this is a person that I have grown to really love, grown to really appreciate. Apparently, we've met, I think, only once, right? I think we've met only once, but we've kept in contact since. And um, yeah, so the next person you'll be hearing is my friend, and you know she'll be sharing her story. Please listen, and you may need to get tissue or one handkerchief or if you're the river crying type you can find a small towel right because it's a very very touching story right so do enjoy and i'll see you after her story bye hi jay taylor i am here to share my story so it all started in 2011 when one night my auntie drove me away from the house because she has a um, attitude of always like accusing me of taking her things so this very night she said I stole her money and I know very well I didn't so she beat me mercilessly also scarred me and I have to just agree to it so she can just leave me I was thinking if I agree to it she would let me be but when I agreed to it, she sent me out and told me to never come back until I get this money. How much was this money even? It was, I think, about 3,000 naira plus. So, I left and I decided to stay with a family a friend who took me in and even went the next day to apologize to my auntie, but she wouldn't listen. So, this family friend I lived with later on took me to her you know daughter that i live with she's always not around and her husband tried to abuse me and you know it was a whole lot of you know drama and then 
um i decided one day that okay i just want to go to lagos and get something doing <laughs> i i used to think life was that easy yes i was a very naive girl very very naive i grew in an anglican church and i was a church girl like big time and because of how i was treated from home i wasn't really really friendly it kind of like affected the way um i became friends with people like i didn't have friends back in school and in school days i was really bullied a lot and so okay back to when i decided to go to lagos so i didn't have a dime on me but as how god would have it i met someone with a car and i begged him to help me down to lagos and he helped me down to lagos and it wasn't easy he stopped me halfway i think he stopped me around mouth or something <laughs> i can't really really remember so i was too tired carrying my bag so i have to give my bag to beggars and then cuz i didn't have the strength to go on with the bag so i decided to stop some people on the road like the car if they could help me so somebody stopped and he asked where i was going to so i remember there's a place called aja in nigga so i told them i'm going to aja so to be to be you know i was lucky he was going towards that area and stopped me around um awuyaya area so in aja so <laughs> i didn't know anywhere in lagos so i was just gallivanting and already it was night so i decided to sleep in front of a building where i saw a bench mm, funny thing is nobody really asked me if i was fine why i was lying down there until midnight i already slept then some security men came there to like ask me why i was sleeping there outside so i have to lie i told them um that i was on a journey and my money got finished and i had to sleep there so one of the security men like gave me a sign like the one who came to ask me gave me a sign to go to the others um that they might you know use me for a ritual and stuff like that so he lied to them that i was his daughter and he asked me to be there for him so the next morning i went to his house with him you won't believe what this old man wanted he wanted to live with me he wanted to sleep with me and so i refused and he sent me out the next day he told me to leave his house and i was only going to stay at his place if i decide that i would you know sleep with him have sex with him and so <laughs> like i'll have to fast forward this whole thing because my story is a very very long one i can't really go into details but i'll just pick my points so i'll just fast forward to where i was very hungry and didn't have food to eat and so i went to beg somewhere where the cook i begged the woman if she could give me some food and she was wondering why a pretty girl would be begging for food and then um i told her if i if she could allow me wash plates then i would you know, she could give me food, give me food in return so she actually allowed that i washed plates and she gave me food so then she asked me if i could come back the next day and keep on doing that so i said yes so the thing is after i finish washing plate there at night i don't really have place to stay and then i'll just be gallivanting out through the night looking for a place so i slept in an uncompleted building a couple of times until she discovered i was sleeping in an uncompleted building and asked my story i told her so she said okay the woman who sells for me lives in a building also uncompleted but it's better than where you stay so um, i started staying there until they relocated i didn't have a place to stay and that woman also was sent off from there because the owner of the building wants to make use of his building so we all left and that day i was <laughs> gallivanting again so i met with some girls and i told them my story and they're like okay you can move in with us so <clears throat> i didn't know that these girls um aaron's girls so what they do is during the day they sleep and at night they sleep with men for money so um 
I was actually in search of a job which I haven't gotten so I was actually dependent on them they were feeding me and all so one day she told me that she can't do that anymore I have to join them you know so I refused joining them because you know I promised God I was going to get married in my virginity because I, I really want that on the vowed and so they sent me out and again I started crying on the streets this time I couldn't hide my emotion because I was like God why me I loved you from when I was a child I loved you I served you why would I be going through all of this then I met a brother showing tracks and then he gave me a track and then he took me to his church <laughs> and then he spoke to his pastor a female pastor as of then and she said okay and she can't allow me to live with her because that she doesn't trust me or anything that I can sleep in the church then she was saying that the word is wicked and a lot of things so she said I can sleep in the church and then I should make sure that the next morning it doesn't look like someone is sleeping there so and then <laughs> I was sleeping in the church I also joined the choir and then one day Everybody knows my story in the church, so everybody was actually looking for a way to help. So a brother came up and said he could help, that he works in um, AKT, precisely. And then I could stay at his place um, here in, you know, Lagos. And I could, you know, stay till I get somewhere, get a job and move. So we're all happy and everybody was like, wow he's a girlfriend brother because he's also he's also a cell leader so some of my friends in church accompanied me to his place where he didn't even allow me to sleep for a night and he came same night i could remember already eating because i was giving some money already eating i cooked and slept it was like midnight when i had a knock on the door and I opened the door. I asked who was that, and it was him. And um, I was wearing my nightwear, and you know, it was a seat through, so I have to like quickly change in and wear something more decent. So I opened the door, and I was kind of not comfortable. So he came in and asked if I could said yes. So I asked him why he's here. I thought he's gone back. He just gave some excuses, but I could smell alcohol when he spoke to me. So I became more even, you know, uncomfortable because <laughs> so I decided to go back to bed and I lay down and then even though I was scared, I, you know, slept off in the middle of it all. So then at midnight when I woke, I felt somebody beside me holding me. I quickly removed his hand and I, sp- I slept on the floor and then he kept like trying to like hold me and everything that was when i knew that there was trouble and then the next thing he was like okay he wants to sleep with me that he knows i'm not innocent <laughs> and then i begged him i told him to please i'm innocent he was like how can you be innocent and i have to even tell him i was a virgin I lost my mom, I lost my parents, I'm an orphan. I begged him with everything inside of me. But he wouldn't listen to me. He was he was so, you know, scary. He had veins all over his face. It was a very scary night. And even though I don't know what sex is, I was just scared for my life because I know I promised God I won't be a virgin until the day I marry. So he kind of, you know, hit me, tore my clothes in the middle of struggle. This guy was, you know, bigger and huge than I am. I was very little. So <laughs> it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. So in all in all, he find his way. Like <sighs> so I was raped, beaten, scarred. See, today I still have the scars on my face because I was brutally wounded because the walls were rough and he would always, you know, hit me and drag me and, you know, stuff. 
and then I was injured so much because you know my hymen was broken in a very bad way so I was wounded so I couldn't like stand up the next morning I couldn't like stand up the next morning and I was soaked in blood and everything He apologized and said, oh, he was sorry. He didn't know what came over him the next morning that he said. And he didn't know I was a virgin. At that moment, I hated him and I hated myself. And I hated everybody in the church. Because I felt like, this is a cell leader. He preaches the gospel. How would he do a thing like that? And I felt like I was being set up by the church. Even though it wasn't true. It's just me thinking so many things at that moment. So it felt like my whole world stopped. And I didn't know what to do. And so I thought this guy repented because he apologized. But he tied me up the next day when he was leaving and tipped me. (sighs) For a very long time. There. Okay, I would also like to say this because... The next morning, after he tipped me and locked the door, I had somebody, a neighbor, who shares what's war with him, asking him what was wrong, that he had a struggle, she had a struggle last night, and who was he fighting with? And he was like, oh, it's, it's, it was my stubborn sister, but she has left now. And, you know, I was, you know, threatened a lot. And because I was naive, I didn't even know what to do. I was young too. I didn't know what to do. So, I stayed here for, you know, I was locked in for a a long time. And when I was released and, you know, dropped somewhere, somewhere else, you know, that I didn't even know. It was a new city, totally to me. Uh, I was told I was pregnant, but I didn't really even believe I was pregnant because... I didn't see my period for a long time, but I didn't even be, like understand my cycle. I didn't even understand cycle because I, I like um, at 18 was when I just had my you know growth with you know changes of my body and everything. Because I didn't really start anything on time because um, I think it has to do with my emotion too. Because um, I didn't start anything good on time actually because I wasn't feeding well back when I was with my auntie and I was working really hard the way I shouldn't be doing as a young girl growing up so I would say I had stunted growth if there's anything called stunted growth so fast forward to when uh, I'll feel movement in my stomach like I'm like am I really pregnant so I didn't have a place to stay. I was just, you know, gallivanting. And I also met a new church where I decided to start attending back then. So, um, like, they became my family. I started staying with a church member also there, you know, around that area. Until they were helping me get registered in an continental, you know. Uh, well, I wasn't very frequent with the Antinental because, you know, there was no money. So, um, one day, I was asked to leave, not just me, everybody, because the house was sold. And they actually helped me get a place, like, a face me and face me apartment where I was staying. And, you know, I was staying there alone. And it wasn't easy. It was a tough journey on me. I wasn't coming out from my face, me, I face your apartment. I only come out on the days where I have to go hawk. Because I hawk different things. I sold pure water. I sold watermelon. You know, a lot of things. I did a lot. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy journey. Until one day. I was sweeping in front of my house because you know in the face my face your house they cannot share the days when you have to like sweep, wash the bathroom and stuff like that. 
so and even though it was tough living there it wasn't it was a very tough experience because i was bullied also because they feel like i was small and young so i was bullied a lot in that area in that house so one day i was sweeping and my water broke i didn't even know what it means for water to break so then i was feeling a lot of pain i was rushed to the hospital where i was told it's time for me to give birth i'm like what <laughs> like okay so i was like really so one of my good neighbor has like run around get some baby things and i didn't have my baby because it was a dry neighbor and plus i wasn't active in sex so it was very hard for me to like have the baby you know what it means i don't know if you know what it means anyways but it was really tough for me and in the hospital i had my baby with a lot of injury and tear massive tear beyond so because i didn't have money you know for injections that were given to me so i don't feel the pain of the soul i wasn't given i wasn't given any injection to you know reduce the pain um i was so raw i felt every single pain of needle going through my body and out i felt every single pain the pain was so intense i couldn't even cry all i could say is doctor it's paining me that's all i could say and i was so like the tear was so i felt every single pain it wasn't easy so fast forward i had my baby and i couldn't pay hospital bill so my neighbors has like helped me call some of my church members and you know they helped me to get back home when i was home i wouldn't lie i didn't like my baby i hated that i had a baby i hated that i wasn't innocent anymore and i hated that i have to do it all by myself with the tear and everything guys i beated my baby i beated myself also my soul got losing back because i was stressing i was sitting i wasn't supposed to be sitting it wasn't an easy journey <laughs> but fast forward to i lost my baby by god's grace How I did it, I don't know, but I know it was God all true. It wasn't an easy training. But Tay Taylor, you know, I didn't love myself until in 2019, I guess, or I think 2017, stroke 19, I guess. I have this, you know, calling. I have this thing calling for deeper place. It keeps telling me that I need to go to Koinonia, a place in Zaira. Yeah, a fellowship where I attended. I traveled all down to all the way to Zaira. It was a very long journey, but I had to do it without my child though. So I had an encounter with God. That was where I found love again. Like that was where I found love again. So I rededicated my life again to God. And I decided I was going to love me. I was going to love my child. And there on that ground God told me. He said, I will make beauty come out of ashes. I didn't like myself. But I also met a woman of God. who was introduced to me by a friend whom I was able to you know to be vulnerable to I told her everything that I was going through and you know she gave me some prayer points and she also led me to God again <laughs> she also led me to Christ over again and you know she was following up <sighs> that was when my journey became beautiful and I told God no matter what I go through No matter how painful this journey is, I love you. I will love you. So, 
I was living with somebody, an uncle. The journey didn't even end with me being raped. I was also abused by my uncle a couple of times. Dear Taylor, my journey hasn't been really easy, but in of it, I found, I find a way to, you know, be positive. The truth is, if you even see me, the days where I was going through all of these things, you wouldn't know that I was going through them. My uncle is someone who has been respected by a lot of people. And I do not want to, you know, turn against him. Because he was one person who picked me up when nobody was there. Like he saw me through school and a lot. But I was being abused also. I was scared. I was emotionally down. Emotionally abused. Everywhere abused. All kinds of abuse, you know. Abuse, you know. You know. And one time, on top of all of the abuse, I couldn't control myself anymore. I couldn't control my... I become crazy. I become crazy like I would shut myself out. I wouldn't talk to anybody. Even though my uncle knew what was going on, nobody else knows. He still, you know, accused me, you know, saying I'm disrespectful and stuff like that. Dear Taylor, I wouldn't say it was a very favorable journey. But you know, I found strength in the word of God. One thing that always got me going is the word of God. Is the beautiful name of Jesus. Is worship. I couldn't confide in so many friends. I couldn't. Because I can't tell anybody I was going through. What I was going through. Who would believe what I was going through was real. Because truthfully, I don't even look like it. So, you know, I try so much to bring up my daughter in the way of God. And I pray to God every day to help me to love her at that moment. I forgot to say that when I had my baby, I would refuse to breastfeed her. And I would beat her. And there was this time I beat her and I threw her on the wall. And she was silent. I thought she was dead. I picked her up. And that was the day I promised God I would never raise my hand on my daughter anymore. And I started loving my daughter. So, you know, truly, God made beauty come out of ashes. Dear Taylor, I went through head surgery because I had internal beauty bleeding and wound I didn't know has turned to a clot in my head and it, it made me snap it made me snap and I feel a lot of pain for a very long time I wouldn't sleep at night I couldn't rest it was pain 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 somehow it was taken away <laughs> I had an operation and I survived I went bald because you know I have to go through that operation. Jay Taylor, I also went through cancer. I pleaded for months and a year non stop. It was tough, it wasn't an easy journey, but you know. There's healing in Christ Jesus. The Bible says if you have faith as small as mustard seed, then you can move mountain. Even though my doctor tells me then that I need to go for chemotherapy quickly as fast as possible so that I can be fine. Every day when I go to the cancer cancer ward. I see people whose life is leaving them. And I'll ask myself, is this how I will end? Is this how I'm going to die? Who will take care of my little girl? 
day to you now. It's a miracle that I got healed. My hair grew back very healthy. God is indeed merciful. God is indeed wonderful. My life hasn't been a very wonderful journey. But you know, like God said, and He promised, He said He makes beauty come out of ashes. Truthfully, I am the ashes that God has made beautiful. Dear Taylor, today I found love again in the presence of God. I learned to trust my heart again with God's Son. And you know, at the end of the tunnel is light. Dear Taylor, I'm happy to inform you that I have a great testimony. I'm getting married soon to God's son, who is a great man, loves me unconditionally, loves my daughter, he loves everything about me. I'm not there yet, like when it comes to the emotional trauma and everything that I have to go through. But I'll bet you that when God heals, He heals you finally. He, he heals you without a trace. And you come out so beautiful and you don't even look like what you've been through. They tell her, I don't even look like what I've been through. Why? Because God is in this story. God is indeed in this story. I have a beautiful daughter that I don't regret ever having. I don't regret having her. She is the most amazing person in the world. She is beautiful and indeed a gift. <laughs> I don't regret that I've been through all that I've been through because it has molded me to be somebody to be admired. I can't imagine how people look at me and they wish, oh, I wish I'm like her. But here, Taylor, in all of this thing, God has made beauty come out of ashes. Yeah, he says that I am a diamond and the salt of the world and the light of the world. Truthfully, I am. So, I'll tell someone out there who's going through what I'm going through. That in all of this, you shouldn't leave God. If you let go, God, you know, in all of this equation, the devil would joke with you. The devil would trample on you. Dear Taylor, I went through heartbreaks, a lot of heartbreaks. I met several people who abused me emotionally. I met several people who didn't like me. I met several people who took advantage of me. But that was because I didn't know who I was in Christ Jesus. And when I finally found out who I was in God, I wasn't trampled anymore. Allow God be the potter. Be the clay. Allow Him mold you into something really beautiful. It's high time you allow God be the one. A lot of times in my past story, I want to do it all by myself, leaving God alone in the whole equation. And I, I would always think it's by my power. But you know what? One of God's promises to me is that He will bring me to a place of peace. He indeed brought me to a place of peace. I have peace like a river. I'm hoping that someone out there derived strength from this story and also a lesson is being learned thank you Jay Taylor for the opportunity to share this story I love you bye hmm. hey dear Taylor I can imagine what's just going through your mind. And it's like, I'm sure to be like, ah, 
this is super story i you know when i when i got to hear her story the first time it was almost unbelievable it's like wow okay and i was like um how old is your daughter and everything how old are you and you know she was just talking the very very like lovely spirited person and um you know i've become very very fond of her daughter too it's that's one person that i'm i'm really craving to see and i really hope that god will give me the opportunity to just go over and be like hey do you know i'm your, like your biggest fan like you don't know imagine you cannot even imagine how much i have i have you at heart so much and um it's just beautiful to know that after everything that you could still find love in pain everything that should give you the indication that you'd never find love right um it's just defeated when true love comes when true love comes i remember when she told me about everything i was so excited and i was like so happy you know and i was like hey girl you made it you made it like this your story is going to help a lot of people because i can imagine you know um people that have had either some form of abuse or something and you know maybe single mothers single fathers or however it is you know you've had so many failed attempts in relationships and you know it just feels like ah this is not meant for me but then listen to this lady's story it's like so mind blowing do you understand it's like so mind blowing it just proves that um Jeremiah 29:11 says I know the thoughts that I have for you thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and an expected end like irrespective of whatever it is right God still knows how to turn stories into miracles so thank you so much for sharing I am so grateful and I'm sure a whole lot of listeners are also grateful and i'm sure a lot of people are encouraged people that must be going through this right um, thank you so much so you know it's our custom to pray and uh, let's just pray father thank you so much for this my dear friend lord that shared her story thank you lord for all that you took her through thank you father for making such a beautiful testimony out of her life thank you for her future home lord that you are building thank you for the love father that she found and father we just ask that you will perfect all that concerns her and her new family in the name of jesus and father for those that might be going through similar circumstances or certain issues that may seem very draining father can you just reach out to them lord and just show them how much you love them and let this story be such an encouragement to them to know that you are a god that loves us through everything father thank you god because those that need healing would find healing in you those that need love will first find love in you and also find love in the person that you would send them thank you father because you are making beautiful stories out of our lives in jesus name we have prayed amen so i really hope that you enjoyed this and i pray um that we'll get some more stories i'm i'm really working on it and i'm glad that we're enjoying it so far so this is me signing out remember that i love you i believe in you and i'm always rooting for you tyler bye